fake it till we make it. Smile, grind your teeth, squeeze the skin and crunch the bones. The nails are deep. Keep the smile, the pretty grin, as steam of pain is sliding in. The tear licks down and frail frown. O oh, beauty queens, beware the hills, the crown may tumble. The silk may fall, the dirt will smear and bite the cherry lips. The fangs are out, stroking skin. The strings are tangled, the knots will twirl. The spinning bodies, the feet lift up. Sleeping corpses, flittering, flattering. Who sliced that beautiful smell? Who stuck the needle in that eye? Who swapped the faces to the skies and stuck the bodies on different sticks? She carried the puppets and lay them down, crumbled cloth, hammered in. The nails are stained on broken skin, the single horn. Swiping the dust to enter the cave, time to gaze, the lid is closed. The lashes open, the heads are dangling, a stupid smile. Keep it fake and start to play. The heads lift up, the story begins, the strings are pulled. Here we are, the masters awake, the faces rotate. Hello everyone, I would like to introduce you um, or to welcome you to the online screening and premiere of um, the first super, the video performance, the first super. Um, we gathered so many people for the performance from different places. And now it's beautiful to see so many people from all over uh, the world to join us for the online screening. Um, and um, yes, let's get started. The first super is um, as a video performance and took place in February 2021 as part of Stella solo show fake it till we make it at Anahita contemporary. I'm uh, I'm the gallerist Anahita and um, Stella and me we planned to have a performance as part of her solo show um, at her solo show um, Stella presented large scale. Um, paintings and drawings and a new series of plexiglass uh, works and her um, expressive wooden masks, face it, um, that you can activate through um, an Instagram filter. And the performance was um, an important feature of the exhibition and it was planned to have the live performance um, during the show, but unfortunately due to um, the current um, circumstances, we had to switch our plans and decided to create um, a video performance and to create a short movie and uh, for Stella to invite um, her collective to Berlin. We would like to share with you um, briefly the um, video of Stella's exhibition so you get an idea what um, we did um, two months ago at Anita Contemporary.
a good introduction, I think, <laughs> to our evening um, to get also in the mood and to uh, recall Stella's exhibition. Um, I would like to um, introduce you to um, the collective Somebodies with Stella Meres, Nika Timashkova, Anna Biskov, and Apoyasa, who came from South Germany, um, Switzerland, and France to Berlin uh, to perform in the midst of um, the lockdown. Um, I would like to give you a short introduction to the artists of Somebodies. First, uh, Stella. Stella um, deals in her large format uh, paintings with transgender, religion, and spirituality. She, com she combines her expressive work with new digital media and makes physical experiences uh, tangible in virtual and augmented reality. Anna Biskov is a performance and video artist uh, born in Ecuador with Danish and um, English roots. She lives in France. She works through multimedia on different interpretations of belonging and home. Nika Timashkova, she develops costumes and textile objects um, that become works of art in their own and are presented in installations. And uh, last but not least, Apoyasa. He is a sound designer, composer, radio journalist, and uh, media educator. He also performs as a DJ at festivals, and um, he creates a sound atmosphere in correspondence with the storytelling that evolves in the collective artistic process. Uh, well, it's very unusual for an artist to bring in a group of um, other artists uh, to her first um, solo show. So how did that happen, Stella? Well, um, we formed a collective, uh, Somebodies, last year in the first lockdown as a response also to this uh, new situation where we all found um, ourselves in. And it was a, a, um, an attempt to um, enable joint thinking, imagining and creating across borders. So initially we do not live far from each other. We live in this three uh, countries region of like where Germany, Switzerland and France uh, meet. So distance wise, we're not very separated. But then when the borders started to close, um, physical meetings were difficult to accomplish. And so in this specific uh, circumstances, we felt a big need and also importance uh, to work together and to um, somehow, even now that it was more difficult than before, so it somehow was a bigger wish to, to work uh, together and also to, to see that uh, this is a very big creative potential in working through three uh, countries together in this specific time. And so in my experience, this collective work that um, accompanied also me as an individual artist became a very essential part of my own work. And when this opportunity with this solo show came up, I just felt it makes sense to um, combine and to, to invite the collective also to the show. Because also the collective work somehow allowed me a new perspective, how to look at my own practice. I learned more about different medias and I integrated stuff in my work that I hadn't been doing before, like, for example, working more with textile. Uh, so I got really inspired also by working with other artists. And I wanted to bring this richness into the solo show and to sh share this also with everyone. And then additionally on that, like it, as a matter of fact, the Corona crisis just really hit um, art and culture sphere really hard. And I think especially artists who do not have a gallery representation had a really difficult time to also find funding. It definitely is easier once you have this representation by a gallery, since a lot of the funds go to institutions and not so much to individuals. And so this was also the case with the funding that we got from Kunstfonds for our exhibition. Um, I read uh, an article from BBK that actually 80% of the galleries who applied uh, got funding, whereas individual artists were only 12% uh, supported. So that also made my wish stronger to bring in as many other artists and people um, to my solo show as possible. Um, in, the, in the chat, you can also find the article. Um, for later maybe to, to read on it if it's interesting to you. Um, and yeah, and then uh, this relationship 
also between the gallery and the artist is is um, is a complex relationship because we also have work in these structures. So the pandemic, like as a group, we met in April last year and we started to think a lot about how the pandemic affects us as creatives. And it just really made sense to to yeah to bring them to Berlin as well. Um, mm. And I was also very surprised and also happy about Anahita's reaction when I suggested to just invite the collective um, because uh, yeah she was very open and positive about it and she didn't like um, um, have any doubts about it. Um, I felt like there was a lot of um, uh, trust in advance, like Vertrauensvorschuss in German, uh, which I also really appreciated. And um, yeah, I mean, because you mentioned the funds going straight to the galleries. I mean, the point is also for the galleries to promote their artists and mm -hmm. their extended uh, artist family. Yeah. So what I what I really appreciated was your sense of solidarity and your vision inviting Mika, Anna and Apo during the lockdown um, to perform with you at the gallery. And when we saw the video, the exhibition video, we saw also the performance which you um, had in, in, in Basel um, mm -hmm. during the um, Art Regionale. Um, so that was also, you know, the presence of the collective was already there during the exhibition. And um, it was like, it was a sense of anticipating the performance and yeah. The yeah, sense of solidarity bring, is, I think. And I mean, also to bring maybe the performative work that we have been doing throughout the year. And that, that's true that also was represented as a video in the exhibition. Also to maybe bring it into a new level. Because I think then, like first, we planned it also as a live performance in Berlin. Exactly. And then when we realized that this is not going to happen, because actually not even the exhibition could really be open. So um, we definitely we couldn't host an event. Uh, so that was also a challenge, but also somehow an opportunity and a chance for us to to think uh, like how to integrate it artistically. Mm -hmm. And then we um, decided to make a video performance, which means yeah. that we had a proper shooting um, and we thought the performance through more in scenes and not so much in like a timeline of like 30 minutes. So mm. we were shooting basically 12 hours. Yeah, so it was a very three days. I mean, it was a lot of preparation beforehand and it yeah. was like a, a, an exhibition for itself. Um, yeah. The effort and the time and energy that went um, to it, um, thanks to your um, great um, efforts, um, all of you. And um, I think we will get to speak more about the performance, but I'm sure everybody is um, excited and keen to, to watch the actual video. Um, would you like yeah. to? Just, just one thing I just wanted really also to mention and to say, because it's quite important when we talk about support and uh, solidarity, I also wanted really to thank Atelier Mondial and especially Alexandra Sterling, who uh, allowed us as a group to work together in the last year, like the, the, we met through an exchange program that was um, initiated by Atelier Mondial. And me especially, I profited a lot from the institutional support because I could stay there at a artist residency, residency for several months. So um, yeah, this this was really um, a, a big, um, yeah, good experience, let's say. We will uh, also get to speak. Uh, we will also get to speak um, to Nika and Anna and Apo yeah. and to introduce them and also their ideas on mm -hmm. on the first Supa and mm -hmm. uh, the collaborative work. Um, but yeah, I'm, if you have to say something more, please. Otherwise, I would say we. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, actually, you could show the video. Maybe it's interesting to mention also that you in the end also joined the performance as a gallerist. I think that's another maybe yeah. unusual aspect of our project that I think is um, quite refreshing. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, refreshing is the right word. I think it had a lot to do with the circumstances and this window of opportunity that you also mentioned. Mm -hmm. And um, I had the sense of like, you know, as you said also before, trusting you and your collective and to start something new and maybe a new chapter um, in performance art and really breaking um, old patterns and engaging in a, in a very experimental um, dialogue. And um, yeah, for me, it was definitely one of the highlights mm -hmm. <laughs> um, during the exhibition and the collaborative work and also working as an artist with you and um, 
Nika and Anna and Apo and Susanna Abdulmajid, who was also part of the performance. She can't be here with us tonight, um, but Susanna, she's an actress and writer. She was invited to contribute to the performance and we will see her um, in the film.
talking for myself, but you know, watching the film and the music, um, you get really into a party uh, um, and festive mood. <laughs> I would also like to thank Stefan Hering, who did an amazing job um, at doing the, the graphic design and the editing. I think, um, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. And I would also like to mention Lau Feldstein, who co-directed the film. Um, yeah, um, the first super, I mean, we just watched it for the first time uh, together um, in, the, in the screening with all of you guys. Um, so I'm interested to hear uh, what your first impressions are, uh, what topics um, are popping up in the video, what associations do you have, um, what mood does the film set you in? Um, it can be very like spontaneous, just impressions doesn't need to be um, thought through sentences. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would really appreciate and, you know, I would really like to hear your thoughts and um, yeah, start a, start a dialogue and conversation that we can play with. Don't be shy, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, maybe it's also a lot of a lot to process. It's a very surreal and um, experimental vibe, and maybe it's not what you really expected. But maybe we can also start um, speaking more about the film and um, the collective. Um, so, somebody's um, you wrote about uh, your work. We draw inspiration from historic depictions of saints and question what is sacred in um, our eyes now. Thereby, the body becomes a temple that we inhabit. We experimentally explore and expand our physical presence and space. The exhibition becomes a place for transdisciplinary multimedia collaboration and togetherness. So what's your a personal connection to, um, to religion and what's your understanding of um, or experience with spirituality and what's your approach? What's the, your approach to it? Um, Mika, I would like to give the word. Uh, sure. I mean, um, I can uh, start and maybe what is interesting is that, you know, um, we talked about spirituality and me, I mean, I was still born in Soviet Union just before some, uh, some months before it became the independent Ukraine. And even though um, I didn't live in Soviet Union, my family and uh, lived in, all my family was born in Soviet Union and I inherited a lot of views that were very present in the Soviet Union. And so I remember that like Lenin said, like the religion is the opium of the people and it's very harmful. And since my early childhood, I remember like religion or not religion, but maybe specifically more Christian religion being very like, oh, that it's harmful and it's more negative. And I remember one time, like some uh, kids spoke about the Bible and uh, I asked my mom, hey, mom, can you read like the Bible to me? I, I didn't know this book. And she said, like, oh, no, this, this book is like super stupid. We don't read that. And this is like this book you can not learn anything it's just really like uh you cannot use it and then my mom said like you know there is greek mythology so i will read every evening to you greek mythology so i kind of grew up with uh, greek mythology that i know quite good all the tales and everything and this is very interesting because in my family it was a very strong like negative uh, opinion towards christian religion but I'm just saying in the Soviet Union, of course, there were also people who were more connected to religion and kept um, tradition, religious traditions alive. It just was my family was very opposed to that. But maybe what I find very interesting is that even though my family is a, like Christian religion now, that's like really bad. Uh, my family is very uh, connected into uh, pagan uh, spirituality of pre-Christian era. Um, I come from a very, very small village in the southeast of Ukraine. And there, all my family, all uh, everyone um, was living in the same area for years, except me, who migrated with my mom to Switzerland. And there in this land, we had a lot of um, 
connection to different rituals. And I remember I talked one time with my grandma and then she said like that my great grandma was even like a healer in the community where I'm from. And uh, she practiced like sort kind of a magic and rituals that are, yeah, that were like connected to um, belief systems in um, Ukraine. And I remember even though we celebrated like Christmas and there were like uh, different holidays, like Christian holidays, I remember that they were always holidays that we celebrated that were part uh, of a pagan ritual. And at one time when Christianity came to Ukraine, it was like uh, mixed with the pagan beliefs. And I remember that we actually always celebrated the same holiday, but we celebrated it like in a in the original way and non-Christian way. And I remember there is like one holiday, uh, which is Ivan Kupala. It's very known in Ukraine and um, uh, Eastern Europe. And it's like, uh, um, you celebrate nature and you go to the forest, you go to the river, you do rituals like jumping over the fire. So I grew up with all this huge belief system, very close to nature and yeah, from that, I would say, comes my understanding and also experience of spirituality. It's very beautiful and interesting, I have to say. And your mom is an interesting lady. <laughs> I wish she was here with us. Um, I'm sure she would enjoy the film. Um, Stella, spirituality was also a big theme for um, your, during your solo exhibition. Um, you created um, the plexiglass uh, work for the window um, and there was a clear association to church windows and I, I love the idea of, um, of you creating uh, works that can be associated with church architecture and um, artworks in, in a very sacred environment um, in 2021. Um, yeah. Maybe you can share also your connection and your thoughts on um, or your access to uh, spirituality and religion. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a bit of an opposite um, experience in Nika. I grew up in a very Christian family, like in a very religious family. And my life was very centered around uh, religion and ar around the religious community. So I feel like everything of the daily life had something to do with faith or with like, um, with the community and my family and also myself, like the, the whole social uh, frame was mostly just religious people. So for me, it was never really a question if God exists or not, it was there. And since I always, always had a very vivid imagination, so I, I had all these like symbols and stories from the Bible in my head and that was just part of, of my reality. Um, so I think that's showing also in the exhibition or in my artwork in general in some way. Um, we will talk later also about symbolism. Um, and yeah, when it comes to spirituality, um, yeah, the, the world where I lived, like the religious world was very, um, I, I learned somehow to see the outside world as something a bit threatening or also dangerous that could, um, threaten my faith or that could like disrupt my relationship to God. Um, at the same time, I was also encouraged to bring my faith or my religion to those who are not Christian. Um, so that was a strong distinction between me as a Christian child and them who are not, not religious. And um, that created for me a kind of a sense that I'm essentially different from other kids that would not belong to the congregation. And um, in that mindset, uh, which was very like, there was a strong sense of community and also a strong bond between uh, Christians. Uh, on the other hand, it was very, a lot of rules. And also it was quite um, dogmatic when I look back at it from my perspective today. But still, I had a very uh, strong and uh, important spiritual experiences within that community and within that framework. So um, I think mostly this spiritual experiences occurred while praying or practicing worship. 
So worship was a very often practiced, um, um, yeah, how to call it, encounter with God, or I don't know like how to, how to really explain it, but it's something that um, for me always was very important and very intimate and very, um, like very connected to my spirituality. And it was practiced with other people. So it's a special form of religious music that emphasizes the personal connection to God. So you sing with the whole community. It's mostly prayer-like texts that speak about God, um, being thankful, expressing joy, or sometimes also asking for help or strength. And, and the practice is a very physical practice also, I feel like it's often by standing or raising arms. Uh, so it's all about physical devotion to God, letting go of yourself totally and resonate within the music and the sounds in a way also forgetting about yourself. Um, and experiencing this in a big group is, um, yeah, it's definitely creating a special atmosphere. And I grew up with a lot of these experiences. And one time I remember I had a very spiritual um, moment when I had like, uh, when I had really the impression to, to hear God's voice and my whole body was shaking. And for me, from today's perspective, what is very interesting that this happened while I was outside the actual church, like why I was just going out for something I don't remember even. And that happened when I was in between the church and the outside world. So later on, I think that became remarkable and interesting for me that, that this moment was somehow already placed in between. Um, and then later with 17, 18, when I, left the religious community I had yeah I had also to situate myself in the secular world which was at the beginning not so easy like I, I lost a lot of friends in this migration to a non-religious space and I had to uh, understand how I how I create a new um, understanding of myself um, so yeah and I think that in the beginning, I didn't even understand why I left. I just felt that I didn't fit in anymore. Um, and I wanted to also be friends with non-religious people. So I was really curious about them. And it was like, kind of, you know, it was always this kind of other reality that I wasn't part of and that I, that I always felt like I'm so different from them. And at some, at some point, I, I just couldn't believe that everyone who is not religious or who is not Christian is like such a bad person or such a different person from me. So I just felt like this separation between me and and as a religious person and between people who are non, like it just didn't make too much sense uh, anymore. And also I didn't want to get married. I didn't want to have children. So I, that was also a, a reason why I left because I think that the whole approach to sexuality is very, or was very, um, uh, conservative. So then I moved to Berlin and I started to study art um, and slowly I also started like to rediscover spirituality in a non-religious way, in a non-dogmatic way. Um, and it was interesting because it really happened through the body. So I did a lot of body work, meditation, body scans, some yoga and uh, some like um, I don't know, just even also singing, I sometimes just for singing by myself, but I really missed the, the singing aspect of the religious life. And I miss it till today because I think that's something very strong and very beautiful that is not so much happening in the non, like I never found something similar. Um, yeah, and I think that also becoming more aware of the connection between body and spirituality, like to see it really as a physical thing um, and not so much about like that the ideas somehow don't matter so much, like that it's a very uh, connected to me as, as a person that also made me more aware about the collect connection between sexuality and gender and religion and spirituality, sorry. So when I started to more embrace myself and also my queerness and my uh, identity as a, as a queer person, um, I, 
yeah, I also could reconnect more to my spirituality. This is very interesting. I, I think, I mean, there's so much we could, you know, um, elaborate and like go deep into and speak about. Maybe there will be the chance later on when people um, can also contribute. Um, but I think it's very, um, very personal also to share your um, individual um, relationship and connection to religion, spirituality. I feel like it's a very, it's a high, highly um, intimate and sensual and also intellectual uh, relationship and um, I really appreciate for you guys to open up and really speak about um, speak about that and in a very um, non-dogmatic and contemporary way and I really um, yeah I really celebrate that um, as part of the um, performance video as well to really have to create a new new connection to um, new age uh, spirituality and religion uh, which can become a really crucial part of contemporary art and you as creators and artists um, play a very important role in defining new, um, um, a, a new discourse and to, to contribute to that. So I think that's fantastic. Um, Anna, we would like to um, also um, hear your thoughts um, on, on the very topic. Yes, so hello. Um, I would say I come, like it's a completely, a uh, far away connection that I have with spirituality. I would say that um, I don't really have a personal and historical approach towards spirituality, but I guess I can kind of relate it to the fact of my need in doing art. So I don't know what that really means, but I think there's something about this little thing that makes me stay alive and that's what I would kind of define my spirituality, just that little interior question that you keep on asking yourself that, that makes you continue. And uh, I would say more that like literature opened me up and understanding and relating to personal and individual quest and what that kind of meant and how you pursue and kind of deal with life, I guess. Um, but for this particular project, uh, fake it till we make it because I knew about Stella's background and like discussed about things. I, I was wondering like what what could I bring in from my side that would be spiritual without being uh, necessarily or personal or historically like um, I don't know uh, known or like I don't know actually um, let's say the subject in itself. So I kind of came across and picked up this book. So um, it's uh, Carl Gustav Jung on, uh, on psychology and alchemy. And I kind of came across it and picked it up. And it's also because I was sewing animal puppets at home. And I was trying to seek understanding between that, what I was doing and ser searching for some kind of mythological elements that could help me out. And this kind of became my symbolic proposition and my like spiritual proposition like to the whole video project. And in the video, I think like we don't necessarily discover the animal that I'm that I'm uh, manipulating, but it's actually a unicorn. And I literally like pull it into the narration. That was kind of my action that I wanted to specifically drag something in. And um, I stroke a poem on the textile, a, a sewn po poem, which comes from the Carl Gustav Jung's book. And um, it's taken specifically out of the chapter on unicorns and alchemy. I don't know how you say it in English, actually. Alchemy, whatever. So I, and this poem that I'll read later, like I integrated it personally because I, it echoed with my relationship with. Uh, with the body and the input that I could give uh, to this video. So I think I just picked, like I pick elements and then I, 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 I make my own story and this becomes my own way of like continuing and participating and uh, figuring out what life uh, is all about <laughs> there.
Thank you, Anna. I love how we can also share some literature here, <laughs> give each other some recommendation um, on what to read. Um, I, um, I, I wish we could like watch the film again. This is just my personal feeling. Like we're like, you know, speaking a lot on these, about these topic. And I feel like it's so much to, to process and to really reflect on when watching the film, because there is also a lot of like symbolism in the first super um, that um, you, we integrated. And um, I think it would be important also maybe to touch on uh, a few ideas and symbols and um, your individual um, connection um, to it. Um, maybe Stella, you would, would like to start. I think symbolism also plays an important role in your work, in your paintings. Um, yeah, so um, I think in the video, you could see symbols of eyes, hands, teardrops, the unicorn, um, which are, and also the masks, the faces, um, which are all elements that we worked together um, and we continue to use and to also create more symbols out of the symbols. So we kind of created this um, dictionary of symbols. And I think um, it's not like really, um, like there's some like meaning to the symbols, but the meaning comes by activating the symbols or by using them, by integrating them in our textile work of Nika, for example, where you also could see the eye or then it appears in the painting. So it's kind of connecting also the different medias. Um, and yeah, for me personally, of course, I grew up with a lot of symbols and um, it always also fascinated me like um, I think that you know it's just kind of entered my uh, artistic language or it just became part and I like also to combine symbols like for example to have an eye and then the eye becomes an arc or the arc becomes a vulva so that there is always this like the symbols are not like um, stuck in one meaning mm, they they're all, fluent all, yeah yeah they are kind of mm -hmm. uh, talking with each other and then I think maybe even the title of the performance the first super I mean it's not really a symbol but it's somehow still symbolic because I mean I don't know if anyone has a guess what is the um, reference that this title came from it's just another try to involve our audience does anyone have an idea uh, but I think the last supper thank you yeah <laughs> that's very true, <laughs> but I also knew that. <laughs> I think the reason why nobody is answering that question is because everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, maybe everybody knows. Yeah, I don't know actually. I, I'm not, I wasn't sure if it, if, because I think the performance video itself is not like, it's not like obvious that we reference to The Last Supper. Like uh, if the title was inspired by The Last Supper, mm -hmm. and then we had also a very interesting talk about it, I remember in the collective because I suggested this title and I also really liked the idea of like the meaning of the um, Abendmahl, like the Holy Communion, mm. which is a very sacred, very important um, um, holiday or like happening. Mm. In it's the, almost a sacrilic to, <laughs> it is, to actually, have this illusion with this contemporary um, video performance. Yeah, I, I mean, think. it is a, a sacrament. Mm. I mean, it is, uh, it's one of the most, um, holiest or important yeah. moments in the community and um yeah so it's one of the most famous artworks also um, and also Leonardo. of course there has a lot of reference yeah. been made to this um thing in art history so that's also what i said then mm. because i remember when i suggested the title first um i don't know nika it's okay like maybe you can also share for yourself but your reaction was quite um defensive at the beginning so i don't know if you want to yeah i mean i can talk about myself no of course i mean uh, from the background i come from um yeah i, I still like even uh, enter i entered other spaces and have like a how to say um I mean, to other ways of spirituality it's very still like i can see there's always like a lot of um I would say something Reserv pushing me back from yeah, reservations, yeah, yeah. reservations for, uh, something pushing me back from like Christian symbolism where I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know it. So I don't want also kind of 
to yeah i was really like uh, hesitant to really choose the title because i was thinking like yeah but it's not not something i can connect to but then i mean like i i, I really liked also how stella you, you said then yeah it's going to be the first supper not the last one not the last as the end but also the beginning and i really liked how it's also transformed linguistically but also in a meaning that's like the beginning you're not the end like some more like oh everything is going to an end but it's like really what is coming mm. i think linguistically it has very positive connotations it stands for a new beginning a new chapter maybe um, even a new um, discipline um, and um, I, I think it's a very strong and um, beautiful and also very poetic title so I, I was a fan immediately <laughs> and I think it's also important to um, to have a new um, or to have a novel approach um, to um, like old um, symbols and old um, masterpieces and um, history and to really um, you know, read about history and art history and to really um, translate that into something contemporary and to make it your own and translate it through your own um, interaction and your own artistic practice into something new. And I think religion, um, especially, you know, in the Western uh, sphere, um, Christian religion um, plays a major role in our, com you know, culture and civilization and um, Maybe it's also about time to really reinterpret um, old stories and to um, stage something new. Mm. And yeah. For me, it was yeah. also very interesting to actually bring this um, idea of the Last Supper, or the um, Holy Con Congregation, to non-religious people. So that was also an interesting twist for me. And um, yeah, and I think also that we started just to see the text, also the poems that uh, Anna brought in uh, and all these ideas and symbols and stories that were in our heads, like the content basically, not just the material. But we also started to see our ideas and references as a material that we can just take and work with and um, adapt and change. Um, so yeah, so that became kind of a, to take this on a more abstract level also. Mm. Yeah, what you're talking about, yes, um, like fragmenting stories and bringing stories in. Uh, when I come back, like talking about like, like about literature and writing, it's true that since I'm I, I come more from a like it's not a scattered background, but it's like fragmented from different nationalities, different backgrounds. Being born born in Ecuador, uh, being English, being Danish, but not living in the country. And, um, and dealing with several languages. I think that like um, literature helped me to help me to consider imagination as a whole and that I could use that. And I think also by, by working with the collective and having other people's stories that integrate mine and figuring it out that everyone has interesting stories, you can build from it and construct and change and reimagine and re re find um, new elements of or narration or or pursuing something and and that's what i thought was interesting in this work is that it's it's not necessarily like i don't know like okay we know about the last supper or that is like something that is so anchored that we can actually with everyone's stories build something and i don't know if it's creating it's not even creating new it's just that we're putting personal input to build something and collectively and that every story is um interesting mm -hmm. Especially considering that different disciplines and different backgrounds, also different cultural backgrounds are coming together also in your collective and during the performance. Um, it, it is quite, um, it's, it's quite a diverse, um, you know, collaborative act, uh, which I also appreciated very much. And I think um, there is a lot of beauty and sense in, in pursuing um, these collaborative works. Um, coming from different media. Would you like to speak about um, your individual backgrounds, um, 
as performance or textile or um, video artists or would you like to con you know um, would you like to continue speaking about um, symbols and symbolism and your work and your approach to it mm. Well, I would, I would just bring back something about a poem that I also picked up and made sense, made sense because it linked for me spirituality and body. And it was sewn in the video and I would read it in French. It was funny because I picked it out because the title, because it was a German poem and that it was a German title, but then the poem was written in French and I couldn't find the actual German text. And then I've translated it in English again. So that's my translation. But I'll just read it because I thought it made sense about symbolism, body and performance and what we were trying to do. Je suis la vraie licorne des anciens qui peut me fendre des sabots à la corne et recoller mon corps à nouveau de façon à ce qu'il ne se rompe plus. So I am the true ancient unicorn that can split from its hooves to its corn and mend my body again in such a way that it doesn't break again. And that was also, I think, a symbolic that point for me to grasp and to be able to put my body in the video and find um, some kind of like, si like symbol or some kind of aim in what my body could do in, in this work and relate it to the others. Thank you, Anna, for sharing the poem with us. Um, I would like to speak also briefly about the, um, the, the beautiful and great um, costumes and um, um, textile art objects that Nika um, created for the performance. Maybe Nika, you can also speak a bit about your um, about the, the works that you created for the performance. I think this is a very important feature. And um, I was um, I was fascinated when I saw your dedication and vision when you were like setting up everything and um, creating the connections um, to the different costumes and I mean the costumes that we regard as artworks, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, I, I can talk more about it. Uh, I mean, like um, it's a very complex, maybe way how I construct um, the costumes and maybe for that uh, I have to go back a little bit still into this um, topic of symbols and how to construct symbols because it's something that is really for me very important and I have like two I would say uh, two directions uh, from which I in encounter symbols the one is really my background with uh, dealing with pagan spirituality and being in my childhood in this small village and dealing with nature and being very close to human the land and animals and where also uh, questions about the body and the spirit were not so much like separated but were really it was more like everything fought uh, together and uh, maybe which what something I can add is also that uh, the region I grew up is a multi-ethnic uh, um, area and I grew up in Ukraine with Russian mother tongue but in a Bulgarian village so which makes it already complicated maybe and I grew up with like Russian Ukrainian but I understand Bulgarian as like my non-native native language which is very interesting and in this village that I grew up we had like Ukrainian Russian pagan and Bulgarian festivities and all these people and communities coming together living together and bringing their own symbols and their old uh, I don't know, stories and narratives from their own culture, which really kind of, I don't know, I absorbed it a lot uh, when being a child and growing up there. That it's sounds kind of, like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so funny because also the, what, every year, I remember there was like one uh, festivity uh, for the B Bulgarian culture. And it's also interesting that they remember some parts, them like, oh, 
this I remember as a child, but I kind of really took it like for granted, maybe being exposed to so many different cultures and not thinking like, yeah, I'm in Ukraine, so I should speak Ukrainian. For me, it was really from the beginning, oh, just take everything you can get. And uh, maybe the second um, view where I uh, look on symbols is uh, linguistics, because I did a BA in literature linguistics. And I initially, like 10 years ago, my initial plan was really, um, was really to become, um, uh, become a translator. So I learned a lot of languages. I don't know, I speak six languages. And in a way I kind of, through these languages, I own, also enter different cultural spaces that I navigate. And usually when I research a topic like spirituality, I, I talk to myself a lot. I'm like, mm, what is this in Russian? What is this in Ukrainian? And through linguistics, I try to see like, oh, maybe uh, in Russian and in German, it's a different connotation. So what does it, tell me about the topic of spirituality. And uh, maybe you have seen in the video, the um, banner, play for your sins. And this is also a way how I usually work with, I have a text or I have a notion in mind. And then I start to- Anna created, Anna created this amazing banner, play for your sins, which is a part of the altar. Maybe we have yeah. to mention that to people yeah. understand. Yeah. Yeah. No, and Nika created that, no? Yeah, I created it. Nika, yeah, I know Sorry. Nika. It was, a, it was, a, it was a, a, no problem. It was a, a spelling mistake. No, uh, I created that banner and it was really also, I was thinking about this pay for your sin and being always like, the body is bad, you have to pay and you have to pay attention. And I was thinking like, oh, from linguistics, how can I make something different from it? And I, tr and I twisted it around to play for your sins. And this is also very much uh, how I encounter symbols because I'm connected to a lot of cultures. I usually fuse all the different understandings and I try to create a new way or a new symbol that is still showing the connection where it comes from. So yeah, that's like my point. I think it would be it would be great. I mean, just uh, just as an idea, maybe people would be more comfortable to also write out, uh, questions in the chat. So if there are any comments or questions, feel, feel free. I just saw like there is a very important one from Court. Um, I'm still looking for critical elements in these religious rituals. Are there any? I think this is a very important question. Thank you, Court. Um, would you like to answer that? Any of you? start answering that don't get shy now now that we got the the audience <laughs> um actually i made a little bit critic with sound um but um i don't know if you understand somehow because it's um somehow different elements and basically i can say it's kind of um, ambience house, maybe as a gender and a little bit put inside ritual and uh, future element. And that future element is some, how sounds weird. I mean, um, it's supposed to be not in somehow in re re uh, religion um, ritual, which means, but I put it, um, um, somehow to make this critic in my language to say, hey, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, this altar, for example, it's um, that Nika created. It's um, lots of things. It's not just about the Christianity, for example. It's lots of elements. So that was also somehow my um, um, way and um, kind of mapping for the sound. And yeah, that was kind of critical mm. for me to create somehow to bring new elements in this ritual also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you did a brilliant job, Apo, by the way. Like I would like to really <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you for your amazing uh, work and music and composition. I think it's really one of the very strong points of the video performance. And I really like uh, your, um, 
your comment on um, bringing also different cultures and religions together since you and me and also Susanna, we come from a different religious background. Mm -hmm. And I think this definitely plays also a role for the first super. And I think it's important mm -hmm. to also speak about these um, elements and um, like, you know, religious or spiritual mm -hmm. performances mm -hmm. in 2021. So maybe this is a critical, a very subtle critical approach to um, the first super, the last super. Um, but yes, I'm sure um, you, maybe it's maybe Stella or every, someone else would like to add. Um, I think for me, uh, there was not so much about making a critical point, to be honest. It was more about um, somehow, how, what's the word of it? I, I'm just, there's a word for that that just doesn't come to my mind. Like kind of um, what I want to say, like to to um, re retail, like something that you know, like I I had to leave the religious community for some reasons, and I also thought a lot about it, like why was that? And of course, that's a critical moment because there was like a lot of homophobia in the community. There was a lot of like a lot of things that were very problematic, where I didn't, yeah, where where, where it's um, yeah, just. I don't know, just um, something that I definitely also see uh, critical among other things. Um, but uh, my I mean, approach. I mean, also the fact that we are staging a lot of very strong <laughs> uh, women um, as the, you know, the initiators of ritual and, um, you know, religious performative actions. I think this is also a statement and can be read as a critical statement to mm -hmm. the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. um, structures and um, and religion um i mean maybe something i can say briefly also when you search for the critical point for me i mean i as i said like with uh, not aiming to do a very religious performance um or video i was thinking a lot about pleasure and body and pleasure so you see the banner also with tongues and lips and uh, for me, it was also the critical moment bringing pleasure and maybe uh, the connotation of the mouth and the tongue and sexuality as back to religion or to a new way understanding spirituality. Where also body and bodily like desires are very present. And this is for me like uh, also my critical take on uh, on classical, what I say, understanding of religion, where I say like, yeah, but you see the banner is asking you to play and to have fun and to experience pleasure. I love that. I, what you just described, um, I think this becomes even more relevant and powerful in um, the COVID age um, to celebrate physical interaction and the importance of physical interaction and performance yeah. and sensuality and celebrating that as a human being, you know, being an artist or not. <clears throat> but this is also a point that um, the, the first okay. super makes. Um, I and if I had to come, oh, sorry, like come for on a critical approach that I that I do have I think also as a performance artist like I use my body to be very specific on actions that can be uncomfortable or link with irritation or be smooth and light like that's like my body becomes a tool that that comes and pinpoints something and that's very important for me and I think that like in a way in this the video, like what I wanted to bring is find an escape line. I wanted to not get out of it, but like I actually, in my idea, turn myself into a horse and Nika too. It's that I didn't want to, like, it's not that I didn't want to become human, but I didn't want to, it's something like I'm, I don't want to participate in, like in, in something that is like, like, I don't know, it was like also maybe getting back to, as Nika says, back to like nature or, or, or bring back the body into something that, that escapes, that goes out, that doesn't participate in something that is very um, ruled or, or let's say um, body, I don't know, something about like, yes, this religion feel that you can have or this like irritation that I can maybe have sometimes with it. And I don't know, I thought, yeah, that's why like animals or nature, they, let's get out, let's have an escape line. And that's 
that's how I feel and what I try to input and this like transmission or also trying to find what transformation is all about from birth to death and how we handled it, absorb it or reject it. Like how do we handle these passages? And yeah, that was kind of like my critical approach. It's like what, what becomes, what is a body? When I say human, it's like the body, like what is all of this? What and how do we use it or how do we think it? How do we deal with it? Um, and if I do look back at the video, I think one question for me comes up also is like, where do you situate beauty and what is it? And how do you deal also with it? And, and, and I think that's why I do performance. It's to, to, to focus back on very essential things that, that becomes that that can that can arouse different feelings. Stella, I interrupted you. I think. Yeah, I wasn't finished before with my point because I also have a bit of a hard time to make the point because it's not, it's 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 more like a feeling. It's not really a rational like thing that I do, but I think that um, since like. Uh, the religious uh, language is is an int is part of my identity. I grew up there. Like this is this is the first way of how I communicate. And I think just by using this language, it's kind of critical because I'm not religious anymore. So I'm 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 taking uh, I'm taking it back somehow because you know like when you leave um, when you have such a break in your in your story of like um, leaving something that's like uh, such a strong reason for your identity then it is really um, a challenge to to figure out like a new way of of being and i think for a long time i was also pretty ashamed for my religious background and i couldn't um, openly speak about it with people because people who are not religious were very judgmental about it so for me it's also like um, to bring it to the table and just to be like, you know, it's just part of who I am and this is just part of my story and I um, I have a, have criticism about it, of course, I left it also for, for good reasons, but um, I'm not like, I, th I think it wouldn't be fair to myself and to my own story to just come up with like bashing it or criticizing it, so no definitely not yeah feel about it and that's also what i feel like you know that maybe that's why i want to dig deeper and be like okay what mm -hmm. is it really about because also in the religious life or community you have a lot of values it's not just negative you know that's it's not black and white there's also a strong sense of community there's a lot of also things that are valuable so i think like how to translate them into into like not 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 that I don't have to be connected to a dogmatic approach but just to see it a bit more um maybe from more different perspectives I just went re quickly to the restroom but I feel like I missed such a big part like um I, I think it's very important to point out that we're not um, um portraying religion as something like negative and black and white and also still I think what is what makes your work so um powerful is your um state of in-betweenness and um... yeah which is also maybe relating to my gender you know like i feel like also that this is actually also part of my spirituality that i place myself i i i, I am non-binary and i i don't um uh as, I, i'm I, I feel like i'm in between genders or however you want to call it so i think that's also something i i just read a lot about recently and i also figured out that in different cultures and also in, in older times, um, people who had that sense of self were seen as um, connecting between um, the spiritual and the earth because they were in between, in a kind of in between state. Mm -hmm. And that's also kind of empowering to see that, you know, like mm. it doesn't have to be, um, you don't have, like, it, it's not like the rule that you just have to be excluded by this, by this. Um, feeling like it could even be celebrated or appreciated or even be seen as something um, even stronger. Oh, yes, so. I think this is the point that we also the film also makes it's um, it's very liberating and empowering to move between a religious and non religious um, world and to um, uh, and to create out of these two different um, value systems or um, yeah. cultural spheres. And I think it's also very contemporary and um, allows us to um, 
to reflect on religion and um, a non-religious uh, world um, and to go more deeply into these um, ideas. Um, yeah, we're having some more comments also in the chat. Um, I would like to also read uh, Kurt's um, comment as a counter program to spirituality, um, the importance of um, physicality. I think this is um, an important um, um, observation. Thank you, Kurt, for your brilliant <laughs> observations and comments. I really appreciate it. And Amaj uh, is saying, Stella, is that not part of death of religion and then your rebirth using your past as experience? And maybe you want to um, answer that. Yeah, it's an interesting point about rebirth because rebirth is, rebirth is a concept I grew into. Like this is like the whole idea of like, um, taking on the faith and then you're a reborn person and you're a better human because you believe in something specific. So, um, yeah, I don't know, like, what do you mean by rebirth? What do you mean? You know, like, uh, I, I see like sometimes time is not, not only in one direction. I don't have just the past and then I have my present or my future. So sometimes, you know, I, I see like this a uh, bit more complicated. So I, I mm. don't know, like, I also don't know, uh, yeah, how to even answer that question. That's okay. Uh, I mean, there's also space I, for it's, dialogue. It's maybe like, I, I kind of think I, I just prefer to just be in this in between, in this in between, in this Schwebe Zustand, I don't know how, floating state. And I prefer not to, and like not to, um, not to have to go too much into like um, defining myself or defining um, my face or whatever, because I uh, I think it's always important, like, you know, like I know also religious people who, who I really appreciate for how they believe and how they practice their faith. So um, sometimes I'm just thinking to myself, like maybe the, the language isn't that important. So maybe, maybe that's a way of just taking myself a bit out of the um out of the field but um yeah i don't know that's yeah i i once read an actually very interesting quote from an indian philosoph philosopher and he said that religion is a living tradition and something like um, it's so in, 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 in part in yourself, like even if you would want to, you couldn't leave it. That's sometimes how I also feel like that it is, it has shaped a way of how I think and how I, how I, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not something you can just strip off. Mm. I think it's um, amazing to see how there is a, um, a longing or a need to talk about um, these topics on, on religion. Um, I, there is a lot of room for this topic now um, in our artists, in the artist talk and in this online screening. Maybe we can also switch to another topic and we can have another event also around the um, religiosity and spirituality and, um, and your artistic practice. But I think it would be beautiful to maybe round up also um, the, the artist, uh, the talk and to maybe um, highlight um, the fact that you are coming from different um, areas and different disciplines. This is what makes your collective also um, so fascinating also in my eyes and why I was so happy to invite you to Berlin um, to perform at the gallery. And also what, um, what um, you value about your collective uh, work. Maybe you can have some short short no, sorry some short statements on these ideas um and maybe there will be also some um notes from the from the audience yeah the stage is yours and i mean who knows maybe there is um in the end some space some time to watch the film again <laughs> this is my favorite part <laughs> watching a film i mean like yeah. Should I start? I mean, like with the a collective, I mean, uh, the collective also, is, it's very interesting. The collective is one 
and for me, as I see it on, on one hand, this is a support group, a mental support group that really helped me out through the first lockdown, the second lockdown where we met and we had like Zoom exchange and we could like, we first, I think what is very interesting, we first connected on a personal level before connecting on an artistic level. And maybe, I mean, the collective as itself, as an institution is very important um, if, because we had like the collective coming together, knowing each other. And then as a second step, we connected the different media we had. And um, at the beginning, we had a much bigger group of 12 people. And then we really came into a group of four people because we really sense that we have um, similar sensibility, but also medias that really with Apo, with the sound, with Anna performance, Stella with multimedia and painting. I think that we, we came for a specific reason together first as we could work together, but also, I mean, I remember um, I worked with photography and costumes a, a lot of uh, time before. And then when I connected with Stella and Anna and Apo, I realized, oh, the costume can be not just installation, but can receive movements and then become a, perform a performance. And it was also, I mean, also how the collective working process influenced me. I mean, um, when I saw Stella's huge paintings, which then became like kind of a scenery for the performance and for, for the costumes and for the movement and the sound. I mean, that was, very interesting for me from the artistic part. Yeah, I also like as a collective, I consider it like as a work in progress where we're trying to cohabitate our ideas and production. And we haven't known each other for that long. So it takes time to understand and to get it. And what I like about what we're doing is that we are experimenting and we are doing so we can have like some sh something visible, we visible that we can actually try and grasp and discuss and confront with and continue. And I think this is what's beauty is that it just we like generous, like we are generous in the input for us to continue. And even though there's maybe lots of mistakes or or, or points that have been forgotten or clumsiness, or I don't know, some kind of issues that we, we haven't solved, we, we try and solve it by redoing or changing or experimenting. So that's what I thought was actually super being part of the collective and that it also gave, well, for me personally, like a, a, like a discipline to meetings and the meetings and structure. And it's not only like results and productivity, like the meetings and the appointments and the references also like evolved in discussion, which became friendship. And this is coming to life. And I can't see where it's heading to. And like sometimes like these questions like in a way overwhelm me because because it's not and like I can't find a specific answer to it but maybe also if I go back on like a personal level like I do performance because we can't necessarily grasp it and you can't grasp it on the spot but you can work on it and I think the collective resonates with that is that it's like an ongoing process and it and it just gives that discipline and that daily kind of stimulus, especially through like for the moment where everything's a bit static. Uh, that's how I yeah, see this collective. And I don't know how it's going to go, but I, hopefully there'll be much more, many more projects and, and, and I don't know, discussions and, and actually also, um, a distance to be able to be critical and have critical approach and critical discussions on what we're doing. I mean, it's important to, to, to figure out where we situate ourselves. Thank you. 
Apo. I'm glad you joined the conversation at some point, by the way. You can also share some um, music with us uh, as a comment. I, that. <laughs> I would like that. I can DJ from here. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, um, I I was all the time in the performance. I mean, we couldn't see me, but um, yeah, that somehow that I feel I am a god there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Especially somehow. when Sus and me were performing the poem by Farukh Farukhzad, um, yeah, that... pioneering Iranian author, and I felt like there was already a sense of understanding and mm -hmm, identifying, mm -hmm. identifying with it, which I really liked. We didn't know each other before, and mm -hmm. I think that was quite special. Yeah, I mean, yeah. your the music is also <laughs> your um, your medium um, mm -hmm. to express uh, yourself. Yeah, um, I'm coming really different um, relationship of or type of relation. I mean, um, my family is, um, especially my mom, as hardcore um, Muslim, came from this tradition. And my father is um, totally others, but um, they have this harmony also. And I grew up with this harmony. And I was also in Armeni community, which they uh, believe ancient um, Christian religious. Jesus is there, for example, brown. I mean, not white as in Europe or USA, for example. Um, but it is also Christianity. And um, I made lots of ritual with them. And I was also in old... Um, Mesopotamia, which religion especially come from. Um, I don't know, um, but um, I can't identify myself as a religious person because I believe um, everything is kind of God self. but um, it's important how you looking from your eyes that's make your you also somehow god because you can decide what you want what you the next action um and i was first angry to god honestly but it's changed with time with um <laughs> with the people with experience and um I don't know. God is everywhere and um, God and, is everywhere. Yeah, the God is yeah. everywhere. And thank um, you, Apu, for opening up so much <laughs> in the end. <laughs> <Elef Blumer. laughs> thank you. Nika, did did I miss your uh, did I miss your statement? Um no, it, it's okay. I mean for me, I said enough. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're towards the end and um, I would like to thank everybody who joined our um, Zoom uh, event. Maybe this will become um, a tradition <laughs> in the COVID age um, to have artist talks and to present um, our artists work in these, um, in these events. And I hope everybody um, enjoyed um, the film and also your um, interaction and also your thoughts and ideas um, on these very important topics. And I feel like there is, you know, there will be more space to talk um, um, about your collaborative work and also um, art and religion. And um, yeah, I would like to thank you, Stella, um, for bringing Nika, Anna and Apo to Berlin to perform in the midst of lockdown, which is kind of crazy, but we did it <laughs> and I'm happy for that. We will share the link for the film um, in the chat. Um, so you can maybe watch it um, again later and please share the love, please share the film with your friends. And um, we would love to also get your feedback and we will continue the conversation and the dialogue um, at the gallery or 
and the internet <laughs> or both. Um, Before you go, I would like to say something since no one actually talked. Just a, <laughs> a quick uh, feedback on the film and the whole collaboration. I find it quite fascinating. I mean, the idea of the film was quite interesting. There were language, there was music, there was uh, movements, there was some sort of intimacy and symbols. So it was a lot of things to process and I think it would be great to watch it again and over and over to really understand, uh, understand like what's the story. But once you tell what you thought, each of you, like the background story, it makes it much heavier. And I think it helped me at least to relate much more to the story because funnily enough, from the beginning, I thought, ah, oh, this is the, some sort of um, oriental background with the music, like childhood, my own childhood, I'm from a different culture, I'm from Iran, and I moved here uh, later. And then it started rolling out and it started becoming very interesting and modern, which is some sort of freedom, which I find it quite fascinating. And I thank you all for this amazing work and I'm looking forward to see more of this. Pleasure meeting you, Danish. Thank you for joining the conversation. <laughs> Hopefully we'll continue next time. I okay, everyone. <laughs> um, I, I mean, if there are any more statements, uh, please. Otherwise, I would say um, I would like to thank everyone who um, participated and um, feel free to interact maybe separately. Um, and yeah, I would call it a night. What do you say, guys? <laughs> Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, and yeah, it was a pleasure to have this uh, mm -hmm. event, even if it's on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it still felt quite intimate <laughs> and exciting. <gasps> so yeah, have everyone have a good night and we will see each other again. <laughs> Take care and stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.